Well, I want to say thank you for making our time together a priority in your life and maybe even in your family's life. You know, I want to also say that with Easter coming up, people are still open to exploring and will respond to an invitation. So please use this as an opportunity. Uh, I'm challenging myself as well with this. Maybe it's someone you've been praying for or someone who's come along uh, your path in your life, Um, but invite them out to Easter. Well, today we're wrapping up our series on the stories of Jesus called The Storyteller, and we'll one day continue to work through more of these. I mean, there's actually 40 stories recorded in the New Testament, but our mission is to help you find and follow Jesus. We want you to encounter him right here today because we know that if you meet Jesus today, he's going to help you through all of your tomorrows. And, you know, one of the images Jesus used to describe his relationship with you is a good shepherd to his sheep. Now, John writes about this in John 10, where he's writing down the words of Jesus. And Jesus said, after he has gathered his flock, he's, he walks ahead of them. He's talking about this good shepherd. And they follow him because they know his voice. I am the good shepherd. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. You know, the Bible talks about sheep more than any other animal, uh, probably because it's popular in the lives of the people of that day. But over 500 times, sheep are mentioned. Uh, you know, they, I, I don't know why, but I wonder probably why is because they tell, you know, sheep tell something about the human condition. Um, here's what we know. Sheep need a shepherd. Sheep need guidance. Sheep are famous for making bad decisions. It reminds me of what the prophet Isaiah said. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We've left God's paths to follow our own. I don't know if you've heard over the past couple of years, there was a story of a herd of sheep in eastern Turkey. And while the shepherd was away, the lead sheep walked right off of a cliff. And rather than the other sheep going, oh my goodness, and running away from the cliff, they just one by one followed this lead sheep off the cliff. And they were probably thinking, well, he went and she went. Why not me? You know, can't be that bad. I don't know if you laughed at that, but I thought that was a funny joke. But you know what? We do that all the time. We we can just follow people uh, or we can just follow our inclinations right off kind of a cliff in our life. Maybe for some of us, we kind of flirt with an addiction uh, or we follow along somebody who speaks into that for us and it's just a wrong path down our lives. Maybe we uh, take lightly our integrity and make excuses rather than commitments in our life. And it's just like going off a cliff. Eventually, bad things happen in our life because of it. You know, Jesus had compassion on a group of people that were listening to his teaching because, as he said, they were like sheep without a shepherd. You know, every one of us, we need a shepherd. Now, we may not believe that we do, but it doesn't make that any less untrue. Matter of fact, I would go so far as to say this. Everyone has a shepherd in their life. John Orberg says it this way, Your shepherd is whoever or whatever you're counting on to take care of you and get you through life. I think that's a great definition. You know, whether that's your 401k or your job or your education or another person, we all have something or someone that we're counting on. So you better choose wisely who your shepherd is. Now, if you want, you can have Jesus as your good shepherd. And when Jesus chose this word good, it wasn't the typical word used in the day for the word good. It was something greater. It it had to do more with trustworthiness. Maybe the word noble is a better word. Uh, Showing the pure heart of Jesus, uh, that he loves you, that he's for you, that he wants the best for you. That's who you want to follow. So I go back to John 10, verse 11, where Jesus said, I am that good shepherd, that noble shepherd. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. 
You know, it's easy to wander off and get lost, to miss his voice and to move along the wrong path in our lives. So I want to ask you, do you know the shepherd's voice? Do you know Jesus's voice? There are so many voices clamoring for your attention. Friends, celebrities, certainly marketers, cable news, blogs, YouTube and TikTok influencers. It can be so noisy. He knows my name, you know. Jesus knows his sheep personally. There's a personal relationship between him and I. He he calls you by name. You know, shepherds in a day would lead and they would take care of their sheep, but it was not common for them to name their sheep. It just was not that personal. Sheep were like a means to an end. You know, when we think of animals today, we, of course, think of our pets and very small Connecticut farms where animals are given names or nicknames. You know, Laura and I, we have a boxer named Lucy and man, she is a handful still. She's what I call, she's a sinner. Sometimes we, I even call her Lucifer instead of Lucy. Uh, she she just ate a package of our tomatoes recently that we just bought. It was just driving me crazy, and I was so mad at her. But then I can't stay mad at her, right? So when it comes to uh, letting her outside, we let her out the back, and she runs around, does her business, does all that stuff. And once in a while, I'll look outside, and I don't see her because she's wandered away a little bit. And I'll look around, I still can't see her. So finally, I'll call her name. And out of nowhere, it seems like, she appears. And she bounds back to the house because she knows my voice and I know her name. You know, we're celebrating Easter next week. And the first person at the tomb on that very first Easter morning was Mary Magdalene. And she was the first one to find that that tomb was empty. And John records this. He says she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, he writes, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? Well, she thought it was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll go get him. And then I love this next statement. Mary. Jesus said. He just called her by her name. And Mary instantly recognizes him. Why? Because it's personal. They've known each other. It was such a powerful moment that's recorded there. When you hear Jesus call your name, you know it's him. You know, Jesus did this with others after the resurrection. He was just very personal. He made breakfast for Peter to restore the broken relationship that they had. He gave special attention to Thomas with his doubts, speaking with him and having this personal moment. You know, he walks beside you. He, he, Jesus comforts you. It's important that we make it a priority to recognize him, you know, not just on Holy Week or Easter, but in every day of our lives because proximity matters. You know, in order to hear something, you have to be in earshot. So, of course, this question is so important for us. How close are you with the shepherd today? I mean, are you engaging with him on a regular basis? Or are you anticipating God's presence in your own life? Or is he merely an afterthought? Do you talk to him before, uh, in the morning before you pick up your phone even? Do you say, good morning, God? I'm so glad for the gift of today. Now, if you have small children, you probably get a pass on this because they're the ones that greet you in the morning and they vie for your every bit of attention. But if you do parent small children, maybe you want to ask, you know, how close are you to to other believers who might be able to kind of help you, um, you know, remember God in your life? You know, what what might help you is engaging with Scripture. And one of the most uh, popular and important, I think, psalms that have have ever been written was actually written by a shepherd and using the metaphor that God is our shepherd, just like Jesus had said. Matter of fact, Jesus, I'm sure, was referring back to this important psalm, Psalm 23. And David writes this. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Remember, we talked about that earlier. Everyone has a shepherd. You got to choose one. 
And David said, I choose God. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He leads me in uh, green meadows and beside peaceful streams. He, he guides me along the paths and that brings honor to his name. And even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Watch this. For you are close beside me. That's proximity. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Isn't that true? Life is difficult. There's hardships. Uh, people can be enemies, but also our health can sometimes be an enemy. Uh, the economy can be an enemy at times to us. And he goes, you're, you're preparing this feast for me in the presence of my enemies, the hardships of life. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. David is saying, I'm recognizing your blessings even in the hardships. Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. That's proximity. He's chasing. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And of course, that is beautiful proximity. So just let this psalm wash over your soul. And maybe, maybe even commit it to memory. You know, work through this psalm and remember how God is your shepherd. You know, the good shepherd, as Jesus called himself, the noble shepherd of pure heart. Another thing he does is he gives his life for the sheep. John 10, 11 and following verses, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. And just as my father knows me and I know the father, there is that connection, that closeness. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. Now, if you're viewing this um, video, you know, at the time that it's been launched, which is just before Good Friday, this Friday is Good Friday. And it's a time where we remember the tremendous sacrifice of Jesus for you and for me. And I want to invite you, if you live in the area here, to come out to our Good Friday at 6.30 p.m. We'll be worshiping Jesus. We'll be remembering his sacrifice through communion. We'll be hearing stories of transformation. I want to urge you to be here. It's so important for us to remember that he willingly died so that we can have life. I mean, we get it so wrong so many times, don't we? Things happen in our life and we think, oh, God does not care about me. He's not paying attention to my life. I, I don't think I matter to him at all. And nothing could be further from the truth. Just like the best of shepherds, he gave his life for us. No one overpowered him and took his life. He voluntarily gave it so that we could experience abundant life with him. You know, there's so many things out there that will promise to shepherd you, <laughs> but none of them is going to voluntarily lay down their lives for you. Only Jesus does that. You know, the good shepherd is calling for you. Maybe you can hear his voice. They follow him because they know his voice. You know, if you've wandered away from Jesus, I want to encourage you to come back and stay, be close to him. You know, Jesus wants to lead you as we read in Psalm 23. He wants to guide you through your life. And yes, bad things will still happen, but... You'll never be alone, and you'll have his strength to rely upon. You'll have more insight and wisdom and depth to your life because of him. And he gives us life, even eternal life. And he'll redeem even the toughest moments of your life. And he will never give up on you. You know, there's an image that's becoming more popular these days in the Christian world. And it comes from another story that Jesus told about a shepherd who left the 99 sheep to pursue the one that had wandered away. So I want to show you this picture right now. And I want to ask you, what does this image invoke in you? Maybe you see the lamb that's right close in the front of the picture. And it's kind of a mess. It's gone through some stuff you can see. And maybe you see yourself in that, in that sheep. Maybe your own stubbornness or your own brokenness. 
Or maybe you see off in the distance the shepherd running and pursuing. And you see the love of Jesus, his grace, as David wrote, his mercy that's pursuing us, his goodness that's pursuing us every day of our lives, even though we are so prone to wander. And I hope that from this, you'll let God forgive you and redeem your life. Old things will be passed away and everything will be fresh and new. If you've never done this before in your life, I want you to invite him to be your forgiver and the leader of your life. You know, this doesn't have to stop with you either. You know, you can tell your friends and your family of this. Who are maybe some friends or family who need to hear this message just like you do and just like we all do? Maybe with Easter approaching, there's some that you could bring with you to hear this message. Who will you bring with you? Who will you tell the difference that Jesus has made in your life? It's it's not too late. It's never too late. And so I hope that you'll pursue him as he pursues you. Well, let me pray for you today. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much that you are the Good Shepherd, that you are noble, that you are trustworthy, that you love us with an unfailing love, a love that will never stop. And God, forgive us for the, our proneness to wander, to wander away from you. And we do it at our own peril, many times not even knowing or understanding the trouble we're getting into. Yet you are close beside us. We matter to you. And you're always there calling our name. So I pray that today would be a day where we would lean into that. To remember the personalness of our relationship with you. And that we would embrace that. And walk with you each day of our lives. As you guide us and direct us and comfort us, Lord, whatever it may be, we want to follow you today. In Jesus' name, amen.